Now, how does one create success as an entrepreneur? Here's a little confession, here's a little confession for many entrepreneurs that I know. Many of us actually stumble into the idea of entrepreneurship. That business is not handed to us, it just happens to fall into our laps. And usually when we become entrepreneurs, the thing is we follow the philosophy of ready, fire, aim. You do it, you set the business, you start marketing it, then you fix up the organizational plumbing at the tail end of the business because what's most important is that you're generating income for the business. So usually when you're already in the midst of being an entrepreneur, that's when you look for the right tools, that's when you look for the uh, right people, that's when you look for the, the assistance or entrepreneurship mentors to help you establish the kind of business which you want to be. Having said all that, good afternoon. My name is RG Ladesma. I am the co-founder of Mercato Central. At the same time, I'll be your host for this afternoon as I speak to fellow cheerful, inspiring, and aspiring entrepreneurs who are all here right now. And um, as we continue here today, um, they will share with us the secrets of success behind their business. Now, if I can only just get the, this thing just disappeared to me again, so if somebody can help me with this uh, Mac over here. Now, I've got three very handsome and good-looking people here right now. So before we start, may I ask you a little favor, is to take a good look at the person beside you. And please tell them, ang ganda mo, ang guapo mo, okay, it's back here again, guapo. And having said all that, we're here to, for them to discuss their secrets of success. So again, as you follow our conversation, please use the hashtag create success. And along with uh, our friend Globe by Business, please use as well, please tag Globe by Business for our conversation here right now. And I'll try to focus on our conversation as game two of the Ateneo LaSalle game goes on here at the Raptor office as well. So our guests for this afternoon are first of all the co-founder of Taklob. We have Jordan Sebastian. I'll do the applause yeah. for you over here. Jordan Thanks so much, Jordan Sebastian. We have the owner of Craft Carrot, Miss Andrea Arancon. Thanks so much for joining us over here, Andrea. And last but not the least, uh, the founder of Antidote Brand Divergence Incorporated, Kendrick Ko. Again, thanks so much, Kendrick, all of you for joining us here right now. So just in case, if you want to follow us online or if you want to tag us, uh, me as your host, my Twitter is RJ Led. Jordan's is living the dreaming. Again, living the dreaming. Uh, Kendrick over here is Kendrick Ko. And of course, for Andrea, we're going to be using Craft Carrot. So let's get into our discussion on creating success in the entrepreneurial world. Now, look what I said earlier on. Many of us are entrepreneurs. We actually stumble onto our entrepreneurial idea. And one of my mentors in entrepreneurship, his name is Dean Tax Lapid. He said that, for, for an entrepreneur, the biggest irritation becomes your inspiration. That's so, uh, like in my case, uh, I, I get to travel a lot and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a columnist and a writer. And when we get sent abroad, let's say when we were touring abroad, the, the first place that a, uh, a tour guide would bring us to would be to the food markets in Asian countries. Mm -hmm. They would be like in Taiwan, be to Xilin, mm -hmm. In, in, in Bangkok, you go to uh, Chato Chak. Mm -hmm. yeah. in, in, in Singapore, you go to uh, Lao Pasat. Mm -hmm. And when we were there, you know, we were of two emotions, me and my partner, Anton Diaz, of our awesome planet. We'd be elated to try all these different food, but at the same time, we were very disappointed that there was no equivalent here in the Philippines mm -hmm. where we could bring uh, tourists mm -hmm. yeah. and the locals to enjoy really a, a swath of different street food flavors and helping incubate markets. And for me, that's the irritation that led to the creation of Mercato Central. So that was for me, but how about for you, Jordan? I understand that you are a true blue uh, Bisaya, tama ba ako? Bisaya. Bisaya. Uh, Bisaya. And uh, you came up with Taklob. What was the irritation that led to the inspiration for Taklob? For me, the irritation for the inspiration mm -hmm. was realizing how crazy things were happening in the rehabilitation and recovery uh, efforts in Tacloban after Yolanda. Mm. So I realized na parang it, things were not going as fast and as efficient as I, I okay. would want to. And people were were going towards ano eh, um, charity and dole outs more than sustainable rehabilitation. So that's where I focused in directly. So it kind of it kind of pissed you off, in other words, quote-unquote. Why, why can't we do something sustainable over yes. here in, in Tacloban? Yes. Okay, then from there, where did, where did you take it from there? From there, um, I asked a businessman, uh, a local hero, you oh. know, the one that really helped out, and asked him, anong negosyo maganda after a, uh, a post-disaster? Okay. And he said, tol, bags. Bags, mm -hmm. create bags, make bags, because it's going to be really needed. It's really needed during a disaster. What ano class in bags? Aesthetically nice bags, uh, utilitarian bags? He said specifically bags for children. Because okay. after, after a storm, the parents uh, need to take care of the children. Eh. 
and backpacks with, with kid items inside would be the best tool to help the children and the parents in their in their recovery stage. So basically people to create the backpacks to create income and yes. people to buy the backpacks yes. who also live in the Tacloban yes. area. Yes. So that's where you started off the whole concept. Is yes. that the bag that you're wearing right uh, now? No, this is uh, another prototype. <laughs> in development. Oh, so in de so oh, constantly development. iterating here right now. So that's that was the germ of the idea yes, of where Taklob bags yes. start. I like Taklob van, Taklob yeah. bags. Taklob. Perfect. I, li I like that. I like that. Then Andrea, for yes. yourself, okay. Um, earlier on, we, we talked about things and you said you actually had another business before doing Craft Carrot. Right, right. Okay. Um, I was giving trainings. Uh, I put up a business right out of college. Mm -hmm. So I was giving trainings to kids, camps, leadership training, things like that. And after some time, it wasn't really, I mean, you know, my passion, I really like color ever since I was young. Mm -hmm. So that's when uh, I was fooling around with the idea na parang okay, why not something that I'm interested in? Why not start the business with that? And how many and years did it take you to get to that, uh, that, that oh point Oh my God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> quite a bit. Siguro mga 10. So, you incubated for 10 years in your yeah, head. Oh, okay. No, but I would ha always have this problem mm -hmm. na I would go abroad and I'd hoard all of my arts and crafts materials from mm. the US. I see. And then bring them back here. And it's always, you know, uh, why is there not a place here in the Philippines that I could buy these things here readily oh, okay. available when I need them. Okay. So that's when I started getting the idea na, ah, baka pwede, pwede dito sa Philippines. Parang a supermarket of arts and crafts materials. So that's where you thought putting it all together and you have a, yeah. start with a small hole in the wall? Is that right? Not even, no, not even. Online? Uh, we started online right mm -hmm. away because we knew that these items were uh, small, easily packable, easily shipped. So we were thinking that para low cost, ah, online see. was the way to so go for us. Uh, yeah, virtual a store virtual store. Virtual store at right, the start. Right. Okay, I got, I got you now. And interestingly enough, you've got a nice similar background. <laughs> yeah. if, if you were to look at this in the corporate world, I would be the client as the brand manager and you would be the, uh, <laughs> the, on, on the manager. account manager on the advertising <laughs> side. So you, you worked before for, an ad, for a multinational ad agency doing accounts work, <coughs> or doing accounts work, creative work? Uh, accounts work for uh, PNG. Okay. Oh, perfect. Uh, PNG, <laughs> former PNG, former uh, <coughs> Asachi guy. Uh, for me, the, probably the biggest irritation, I've, I've always been into <coughs> brands, mm -hmm. I've always liked studying brands. Uh, and for me, the biggest irritation has always been, if you look at, if you, whenever you travel abroad, you don't get to see any <coughs> Filipino brands. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very seldom that you come across a Filipino brand. Mm -hmm. And I've always found it uh, to be something that's you know, disappointing for the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, I think we're always, we're always excited to have you know, so-and-so brand coming into the Philippines. Uh, and it's great okay. uh, for the economy and all that. But and it's great for the choice of you know, our, our Filipino consumer. But as a, as a country that prides itself on being creative, I feel like we don't have... Pardon me, disconnect. May disconnect, yeah, disconnect. Okay. Uh, so we say we're creative people, but we don't really send out a lot of our own brands. I see. Uh, to other countries. So that, that's, that's where it started. I, after, after working in Saatchi for about less than two years, uh, it's something that's been gnawing at me. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to do something different. Okay, so you, you left to put up your first to brand? Put up, uh, to put up Antidote uh, so that I can work with clients to develop brands for them. I see. So your first job, your first entrepreneurial job was to offer your ser brand consultancy Correct. services for other clients. For other clients, yeah. Okay. Uh, ent entrepreneurs, small and medium enterprises, usually they have existing brands, but they want to expand or maybe they want, they have a product idea, they don't know what to do with it. So that's where we come in. We help them develop a brand behind it, the strategy, the communications, the design, everything, all the way until they're ready to launch. Okay, so Antidote right now is still developing brands for other people, or are you developing uh, brands for yourselves? Uh, about four years ago, we stopped working with clients. Uh, again, the, the, the vision for the company has always been to bring these brands out. Okay. Countries, and we thought that working with clients, uh, you don't always get that alignment with a client, because sometimes their own goals are different from you. So uh, with that, we decided, you know, why not you know, have to vertically integrate, say, okay, so I won't be disappointed. Let me just create my own brand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, I get yeah, it. It's just sort of put, put your money where your mouth is, basically. Yeah. Okay. So if you really believe in, you know, that you'll be able to create something different and bring it to other countries, then do it yourself. Uh, yeah, so uh, you've got a lot in your mouth right now, I see. Uh, <laughs> and we'll get back to your brands later on. Now, uh, let's go back here to Jordan. Jordan, now, for Taklob, you started developing the bags, and these were basically bags which were very, I would say at the start, very functional for the people of Tacloban. Yeah. 
And I guess at some point, try to make them become more aesthetically pleasing or, or, or develop more functions for the bag. Um, when did you realize that here in Taklob, there was starting to be some, some traction to the business and you're saying, wow, we can actually make this business work. When did that point come for you? Um, it, 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 it came about first in the establishment of the facility. We did it through crowdfunding. And when people started ordering oh, okay. uh, from the Philippines, from other countries, um, then we were able to set up the facility. I knew that there was something going on. Parang pwede, pwede. Let's see, let's see. Mm -hmm. And then when um, we were successful in some of the bazaars that we were going into, we were getting um, or um, we were getting sales like two hundred thousand per day. Wow! In some wow. of the bazaars that we were getting into, I said, "Ah, ito na. There's something here." And when, when people buy the bags, what, what was unique about the bags? Was it because they were buying it for a social cause, or were people buying it because of the design? Uh, um, I'd say sixty forty. Okay. More sixty because of the function. One of our most uh, best-selling bags or the earthquake ready backpacks with items inside already. Ah, okay, I see, I so see. So that was more parang the people wanted to buy it because of the convenience and there was at that time really a, a major awareness okay. on earthquake preparedness. Of course, of course. So, so but uh, a lot of the online sales naman were really because of the, the social enterprise side. I see, The I advocacy see. of the whole brand, of the whole initiative. Can you give me an idea right now, like how many bags are you selling today? What's the current skill? What is the current operation right like now, for you guys? Right now, at this point, um, we have less movement in online, but we're going really full blast in corporate. I see. So right now, we just closed a 1,000 bag deal. Wow. With a, a non-profit organization, an okay. NGO that's catered to um, giving backpacks to children. Ah, so basically, it's like you know, um, a good an NGO also getting from an NGO at yes, the same time. Yes. So, so social entrepreneur, uh, an NGO getting from a social entrepreneur yes. at the same time. So, so kind of feeding, like the, uh, the, feeding the ecosystem yes, of that the industry value over gets there. Better and better. Ah, I see. Understand. Understand. Okay. Now, now let's yes. take a look at you guys. Now you started off as an online store yes, of, of all your different things, correct. and the challenge that comes to me in my head is that. Why don't I just directly import it from abroad? If right. you can just, if you can just, uh, if you're just uh, being the one one stop shop, people can just order right. now online, right? Diba? Correct. Right now, yeah, that's that's the way it is. But when we started a few years ago, mm -hmm. um, Lazada was not, you know, these these bigger aggregator brands mm -hmm. uh, and the websites were not really too popular yet. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. that was one of the things that we really had to focus on was getting people to believe that we were legitimate. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of Filipinos don't want to buy online at what, 2013, 2014? Mm -hmm. There's a lack of trust, but yes. we, we weren't so heavily developed yet when it right. came to the, to the social media, yes. at least transaction-wise. Mm -hmm. Correct, uh -oh. correct. So that was one of the problems that we had to focus on early on when we started. Um, and how did, you, how did you overcome that, that, that issue that, you know, that Trust was a was an issue. Was an issue. Uh, we well, we would be like on top of all the orders. Uh, we would be connected with our with our customers via Facebook, via Instagram. They could uh, email us any time of the day and night, and we'd answer. So I guess the accessibility that the you had over there. Accessibility was oh. very important, and then we'd pop up in several bazaars and you know workshops of several I artists. See. And then in terms of what you're doing right now, how how big is the business right now? Just give us a scale of, scale. of what you're doing uh, right we, now. We started out around 30 uh, types of inventory items. Now we're about 2,500. Wow. Okay. In a span of two years. We're housing about um, 13 brands already, mm -hmm. uh, inter both international and local Are you brands. exclusive distributors for these brands? We have several exclusive distributorships, okay. wow. around five. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, parang we're trying to uh, address like uh, certain needs of our Filipino artists. And are you a brick and mortar store or are you still online? We're online, uh, but we opened our first brick and mortar last April. I see. Yeah. Now, for Kendrick, very interestingly enough, because you said he's handling many, many brands. I know there are many stories there, but tell me about your, your first brand and how it's doing. Well, uh, our first brand is called Lagu. It's a Sandra Pellant beach blanket. We launched it in January 2012. Okay. Uh, the idea there is, you know, our, we have probably the best beaches in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, we, don't, we don't really pay attention to the sand erosion mm. uh, that's happening in the beaches. So that's mm. where we focus. We develop a product that's underpellent. Use it. Pag pag mo nang yung sand. Interesting. How did you do the ideation behind that one? Was it just? Uh, I mean, some. Was it? Was it a, a something that you kind of had to do because you're saying I have to do my, do my own brand, or because you were saying uh, it? Somebody just said, hey, you know, 
صعب بس الايشو اتس مور اوف ماي وايف اند اي واز اون ا بيتش اه اوكي اوكي اي جات ات ايف اوس بين او سي ويز لايك سام جيتنج اون اوكي سو بتلاقى بقى ترافل بقى ترافل اوكي اوكي جات ات ذا ايديا ستارتد اند ذن ماي وايف اند اي وركت اون ات اند ذن فروم ذير وي جست ديسايدد تو تراي ات اوت ان ا بازار اند ذن اكشلي وي ورنت اكسبكتينج So our goal was always, was always to bring it to other countries, but we weren't expecting uh, when we launch uh, that immediately through social media also, and you know, because the Philippines are very popular tourist destination, we always get foreigners coming in. And going, to, going straight to the beaches mostly, yeah. avoiding Metro Manila, going straight to the beaches. Yeah. So with that, uh, we got a lot of inquiries right from the start of people wanting to bring it to other countries. So uh, I guess that's where we, we realized well, we have something here. Right? It's, it's okay for us to let go of the... The client uh, servicing yeah. side of the business. Ah, I see. Uh, okay. And that, that must have been a bit scary at the start. Yeah, it was very scary because at that time, it's like letting go of a sure thing. Yes, we, yes, yes. We work, oh. we work on a retainer basis, so we had a lot of live contracts by that time. Yeah. Which we had to tell our clients, and respectfully, we'll have to cut short this one. Yeah. Kind of difficult decisions you make strategically as an entrepreneur because, right. I mean, it's not like when you're in a company, you cut things off. It's a strategy. <laughs> yeah. When you cut things off over here, that's your payroll. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, right. your, that's your salary that you're yeah. cutting right. off over there. Having said that, Jordan, let's go back to you again. I mean, there's a lot of challenges that, that, that happen to us entrepreneurs. Like, uh, for myself, the, the, biggest intra- the biggest challenge which I face like in, in Mercato is the idea that, you know, um, you, know you, you work very hard and you build the business to this level, let's say. But what you realize is that people or your competitors are younger and they start off from what you, what you already, you know, mm-hmm. from what you've accomplished, yeah. they're starting off from this point as well. So it's, you know, part of, so they don't have that sort of emotional baggage and then the, the challenges that brought you to this point. So you've got to, you have to keep on competing, especially now it's difficult in the world of social media and, and food and food being viral and you've got to compete. So for me, that, that's one of the challenges of how to stay always at the top of my game and, and, and stay competitive. And, and let's say in your case, Jordan, what did you? What are the biggest challenges that you face? Uh, is it logistical? Is it? Uh, what is it for you? I mean, the reality of how I I, I started was, it was a broken city. Mm-hmm. It was a devastated city. So given the challenges of an entrepreneur, and then given by the challenges of a logistically broken system. Okay. So that was the main problem, and then plus the emotional. Uh, emotional traumas involved oh. of the people, that's the right, suppliers, that's right. and everyone there. So, um, yun yung pinaka challenge. And then put it, keeping things together. Parang ikaw yung as an entrepreneur, ikaw yung nasa center of everything. Eh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you have to keep everybody in place, everything in the right direction, and everything. So the main challenge was really um, working in a broken system and finding that wholeness and you know, and being yeah. there. It's, it's very interesting because as we talk about this one, you know. And entrepreneurs can f- kind of like a catch-all phrase. And like yeah. this one, you're like, it's a lot of this is HR work. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it's like yeah. inspirational, yeah. motivational yeah. work. This is very yeah. CEO type work that, that's going on over here. But for others, it can be different challenges yeah. going on. Correct. Like for you, Andrea, what is your challenge? What is your biggest for challenge us, for you? At the beginning, it was really manpower. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we don't have the big capital. We, we're a small business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So at first, it's super hard. It's really us mm-hmm. being there every day. Us serving the orders every day, making sure they got out. Us manning the bazaars, um, making sure in that bayang everything was running smoothly. So manpower was a really big issue for us. And then next, since we deal with inventory, mm-hmm. so it was also an issue of money, capital. So at the beginning, we had, I mean, you know, we just kept on rolling, kept on rolling. Yes, yes. Such, that's, I mean, that's, how that's how it goes, right? Just roll everything, roll the money, roll the funds, roll everything. And you reach a point where you see na parang, oh, wow, parang from where we started. And now we're, we have like um, this much inventory, this much, I know we have a, a lot of people working for us already. Okay. Then sometimes it's just like you're keep your, head in, you're, you keep your head down. And then when you look up, oh, boom, boom. Okay, we're here yeah. na pala. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, I just, I just, I'm talking right now, the boom, I mean, yeah. I, can I just share, like, when, like, for me, when I was talking about the traction, the idea of traction yeah. earlier on, it was just one time when, after we opened the market in six months, and I, and I just stood there, and then I just saw the, the flow of people, and I was realizing yeah. this is just an idea for me, yeah. I, I saw the flow of people, I just had this big smirk on my face, because I was going, yeah. Yeah. Wait, uh, then, yeah. you know, <laughs> then people are there, then, and then when I just say, when I tell people like, you know, um, what do you do, oh, I, I put up a market called Mercato, Mercato, the one yeah. over there, that's when I, wow, so I mean, that's when I kind of felt, you know, uh, we've gotten there, but then I realized, but there's still a lot of plumbing to, to work on at, at this point, yeah. right? 
And Kendrick, what was the plumbing that you were working on uh, when, uh, when you were already running the business? Well, at, at the start, we, our, our, we, we, we developed a sewing community in Laguna that was making the blankets. Uh -huh. The capacity wasn't that big. But you're, you're, as, as an entrepreneur, you're always having this balance. You, know, you want to get a big order, but you don't have the capacity. And you don't want to like, you you build out the capacity before you get the business ready. Of course, you want to get it, right? I mean, as, as, as an entrepreneur and as a salesperson, you want to get it all. Uh, when you first got a big order from, from a German company, uh, they were asking, oh, what's, how big is your capacity? Can you handle this much? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. And then they say, uh, I, I need it in like two months. That's more of a challenge right? when you're starting out. Like, of course, you want to hit it big, you want to get a big order, but you don't have the capacity and you, and you don't have like unlimited resources to wait. Yeah. That's, right, order, that's right, that's right, that's right. It's a matter of like, I, I had a great team working at it. For the, for, the, for the two months, we just non-stop figured out how to get it done, and then we were able to hit the deadline. So really, just that. capacity building was a key capacity issue. Building. Okay, yeah, I see. And, and also, I guess, uh, as a local brand, whenever like big companies come in and you want to bring your brand, I guess it's the, the, there's always this question that, can we just buy the product? We don't want your brand. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But and you, I guess you refuse so that we, one strategically. We, we, oh. we thought, like, you have to buy the brand. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and in all of our products, we always put they're probably made in the Philippines. Because mm -hmm. I feel like you don't, you don't want people to just buy the product. Mm -hmm. You want to buy the brand. So that's where the story and, is. And, that's, that's where right. the, and, and right now, from, from how I'm seeing things, even from my own business, is that many millennials around the world, people are, are not buying your brand. They're buying your brand stories. Right. Really, I, I guess that's, that, that's a right. common feeling that we all have nowadays. That. Yeah. I realize nowadays it's not enough anymore just to not like five years ago mm. yeah. I could put a picture of, of, of a post a picture of, of uh, a new food product yeah. and the likes would be zoom up yeah. right yeah. but then nowadays I, I post on photo people barely notice it maybe it's just because of the algorithm of Facebook yeah. but aside from that one is that the competition is just a lot so yeah. right now right. you can have to level up where, where you're doing video content of, of Taking people uh, scraping raclette cheese, right. but then you gotta do more. Now you gotta tell. You have to use brand stories, like mm -hmm. Instagram stories, to yeah. tell a bit more stories. So people go, I'm eating this cheese that came from yeah. Davao, or you know. Yeah. So I mean, I think I think that's what we're all um, going through in our own brands. Yeah. And for people just uh, tuning in right now, please make sure to use the hashtag create success and of course tag our friends Globe My Business as we continue this very entertaining discussion on entrepreneurship. Uh, these are the grizzled faces of entrepreneurs. <laughs> uh, the over here. Yeah, and you grizz show them your grizzly face. There, there you go. Now, um, uh, moving on from here now, I mean, let's talk now about the idea of tech because I'm sure it's all affected our businesses. Uh, it, it's changed the way that we do business. Ten years ago, our businesses would not have been possible without the idea of technology behind it or going, going online yeah. for the business. Now, it's very common for us to say, okay, I have an online store, yeah. online store, yeah. online store. Okay, uh, that's the barrier to entry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are the other things about technology that have helped you grow your business? Let's just stretch it a bit more. What, what have you been doing with, with technology in particular that, that's helped you grow the business uh, a bit more that would have not been possible before? Uh, for you, Jordan. Ako specifically, mm -hmm. I, I find it very convenient that there are different apps. Mm -hmm. uh, there are different apps that are able to send uh, documents mm -hmm. fast-paced. Mm -hmm. Parang kahit na low, yung like there's this one, there's this one app right now. I don't know if you're familiar with it, Fire Chat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Parang even, even without signal, even without signal, even without Wi-Fi. Ah, oh, parang yeah. Wi-Fi lang ata nag-jump siya from ano. And it's helped me be able, to, I mean, something like that. Parang with Instagram, with Telegram, and all these things. Mm -hmm. Parang it's helped me communicate faster. And yun yung sa amin, eh, the connection and the communi communication has to be very fast. Eh. I see, I see. So yun yung nakatulong sa akin. I see, more I than, see. More than anything else. Interesting, interesting. How about for yourself? For us, it's been the inventory keeping, since we're keeping track of so much. Uh, uh, with so many different colors, so many different sizes, so that that in itself, like having uh, a good back end inventory system, like like what Shopify has, mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. so that one it cuts down my work time, talaga. I mean, from about before I used to do it manually when we weren't enrolled, ba? Uh, I, it would take me like three days to count my inventory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kasi yung dami. But now it's. I can do it in two hours. I can check which wow. items 
you know, work ka mag, Pwede kang mag-multitask na, yeah. di ba? Ang effect. Oh. Yeah, so maraming ibang time na na-free up for other more important things. I see, I see. Yeah. And for yourself, uh, same Jordan. Same with Jordan, uh, with, like, using apps. Uh, we, in, in the office, we use uh, an app called Slack. Which, you know, Slack, yeah. Collaboration, it just makes it easier because everything's there. I can mm. chat, I can send file. Or sometimes when I'm already out and I have a meeting and I don't have a file with me, mm. it's easy to just tell somebody in the office, can you send me the file? Mm. And then in a few seconds it's there. Uh, or even with back office, that's yeah. such a big headache, I think. Uh, coming from coming from where we started as a client service company, yeah, yeah. operation that's so easy. You just, mm. The exactly. Exactly. I, I, I can. I can. I can <laughs> empathize with you. Per, it's like moving from heaven to hell when you go from uh, from uh, structure. And, 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 yeah. and, and for us with Lago, we deal with a lot of stores. But that has always been the biggest headache. Like, would deliver, mm-hmm. and then sometimes the, the delivery receipts get lost. Mm-hmm. And you know, wala ka ng copy with that. Mm-hmm. Only one copy. So you're, you're trying yeah, to figure out yeah. how much stock do I have in this mm-hmm. store. So you know, having having tools like NetSuite, for example, we work with social enterprises to. Mm-hmm. You know, for, for the back office stuff, finance, inventory. So these things, I think, uh, help a lot. So as, as Andrea is saying, they can focus on the important things. Yeah, right? yeah. And like, like in my case, I, I'm a very marketing-heavy company because, you know, yeah. I require specific people to go to a specific place at a specific yeah. time to patronize specific vendors. Mm-hmm. So for me, one of the bigger things which actually helps me out a lot is... Um, well, online, of course, the, the marketing, uh, Facebook marketing, but in promote local businesses because it's a, there's a specific radius to it. So it it's geographically based. Uh-huh. But aside from that one, it's complemented also, let's say, with, for example, Globus got the Ad Blast, which I like yeah. because mm-hmm. the Ad Blast has two types. It's uh, proximity-based. So let's say, for example, if Mercato is here, I can say, can you blast it to all Globe subscribers within this, this radius? Wow. That's great. But the other one that they also have is you can be, do it based on demographics. So I want uh, from ages of, let's say, the millennial. I want a 20 to 30-year-old, uh, somebody who works in a BPO. Yeah. Um, you can send messages uh, on that Up way. Up to that well. specific? Yeah, you can. You can You can just define, define it to the people from, from Globe by Business. They can actually tell you how, how you want to do it. And for me, those are very important yeah. things. Uh, nowadays, you know... Um, I, don't, I, I barely put any more money, and I came from traditional uh, yeah. advertising. So, you know, and, you know my, in my head, it's, the, it's basically, what's the basic marketing plan? Print, mm. radio, yeah. TV, and Maybe, now all yeah. my budget basically is going to digital. And, you yeah. know, I'd rather pump my money into a $5 campaign mm. to what promote uh, the opening of a new market. And I get more, I, I get more people coming, mm. coming yeah. my way. Um, I wish we actually had more time to discuss this one because it's very interesting. <laughs> a lot of jumping off points for us. But then... I want you guys to take a step back and you know think about this one. When you were still that um, aspiring entrepreneur, you go, I wish I could have told my younger self or my, my, my friend, myself, 10 years ago, what we could have done better or what we could have improved. What would that advice have been for you, Jordan? What, what, what advice would you have for aspiring entrepreneurs? Looking back again, you say, okay, I don't want people to make the same mistakes that I made uh, during the time I was setting up the for business. For me, very critical yung who the partner she worked with from the start. Mm-hmm. And if you do wrong there, parang it's, it's so detrimental to your immediate, immediate successes. But yeah. if you really are able to choose your collaborators right, it can actually propel you to that critical stage of a startup. I, I guess what's what's what what is find the X factor there is the, is the passion that, mm. that, that the founders am I, am I right? Yes, that, yes, you yes. gotta have people who are just as Actually, passionate as you. Eh? And compassion. Ah, passion, compassion. And, compassion. I, and I have okay. this word with compassion. You, you already have passion there. There is also compass. Okay. So compassion actually uh, gives you the ability to have direction for your passion. I and see, I, I that's see. very very important for me. That the I people see. that I work with have compassion also. Grizzly face, grizzly face. I like, I like, I like, I like, I like. Again, that's living the dreaming of Jordan again. That's for Taklo Bats. Thanks so much for sharing that one over here. How about you, uh, our, our carrot top card? No, crab <laughs> carrot. How, how about yeah. you? What would you want to share about uh, entrepreneurs to continue, you know, bring out the passion in the work that they do? For me, siguro, it's a matter of just showing up daily. Because for a lot of people now think na par okay I'll enter into a business and then they don't really understand the day to day talagang the grind that you have to be there you have to show up and it's not instant like what you see on Facebook exactly. or Instagram exactly. you know it's, it doesn't take 5 seconds it takes really powis any <laughs> hard work you show up and you know if you really believe in what you're doing in your product yeah. in your idea then yeah go for it uh, be I like there. That. I mean, half battle really is show is just showing up yeah. in the office. I mean, 
you're you're fire. I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, you're firefighting the yeah. whole. I mean, that's most of your you start <laughs> when you start of your job, right? But then the thing is that that's that's part of the passion, right? Can you can yeah. you wake up every day and say, I'm gonna yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm still here. I'm still here. I can do it. Like, Great, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And 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 for your, wait before that craft. Carrot. Carrot. Yes. That's that's her Twitter account, and of Correct. course, over here the Twitter account of uh, of of Kendrick is what's your Twitter Kendrick account? Ko. Kendrick Ko. Yeah. Kendrick, you what do we what can you share with uh, aspiring entrepreneurs and how they can bring passion to the business which they do? For me, uh, no, it, it's it's similar to what they were saying. Uh, I, I've always believed in this from phrase called uh, enjoy the process more than the proceeds, because mm. I think uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, as Andrea saying. You see the glamour of it on social media, yeah. and people pe like people tend to congratulate you more on when you started the company, yeah. when you started yeah. company, when you launched something. But that's not where it is, no. right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you just barely started it. Yeah. It's like you're at the bottom of the mountain. You're about to climb up, and people exactly. are congratulating you. Oh yeah. You. So I think for, for for aspiring entrepreneurs, it's really more of that. Uh, think of it more of enjoying the process day to day, uh, mm -hmm. having Great. that goal that you're chasing. I think. The, the ups and downs, like people say there's a lot of ups and downs, and but they don't say there are a lot more downs and ups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Got it. Yeah. So just, just being able to enjoy that process and having that, you know, having that goal to chase. Yeah. And, and on my part, you know, I always say it's like, you know, what I've learned from, from doing all this entrepreneurial work and speaking to entrepreneurs and working with them is that, it, it, you know, entrepreneurship is like, it's like ways. You want to get to the same direction, but you kind of have to keep on pivoting. Sometimes yeah. ways changes and you, you have to go, yeah. it goes over here and goes over here and then, it's not exactly where, where you thought you'd initially take you, but you, you want to get there. But you've got to have that sort of passion and fortitude to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm to yeah. get there. I'm going to get there. Might not be exactly the same way that I thought I'd get there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to get there. Yeah. And the other thing I also realized a lot is, you know, being an entrepreneur, you have to eat a lot of humble pie. It's a, it's oh, a lot yeah. of, you know, um, uh, when you're there, it, it, you know, if you fail, it's, it's, it's part of the whole picture. I mean, uh, there's many failures, there are, there are big screw-ups along the way, but I mean, it's kumbaga, just as long as you fail fast, fail forward, and kind of say, you know, this, uh, I failed in business, but I did not fail at life. <laughs> that, that's, that's what I think. And I think that's what passion is all about, when you realize that failure is just part of that overall journey in becoming uh, the entrepreneur that you want to be uh, in the future. And with that, again, guys, thanks so much, Jordan of Thank Taklo. Sure. Thanks so much. Andre of, of, of Craft Carrot, and of <laughs> course, uh, Kendrick over here of many, many brands. <laughs> thanks so much, guys. So again, thanks for following us over here. Thanks for helping us create success. Again, thanks again to our friends from Globe My Business. Guys, uh, if you want us back, just let us know. We'd love to come back here on Grappler. Again, catch the game. There's a lot of passion <laughs> going on there right now. Thank you. Thank you.